So next we'll trim the green film. Um, that's going to cover up the toner and just fill in any gaps in it. To cut this stuff, your knife has to be very sharp. Um, make sure you've got a good blade on it. I use the straight edge again. Just clean off any of this crap from the old blade that was not sharp enough. You'll see you get a nice clean edge when you do that. So basically we're just going to cut it to the size of the board and leave about an extra inch and a half beyond it. So that way we can fold it over when we feed it in the uh, laminator. So like the paper, the green toner has two sides. There's a shiny side and a dull side. We want to make sure that the dull side is down on top of the black toner. So it's important this stuff that you don't get any wrinkles. Um, a wrinkle sort of causes an imperfection in your toner. And you want to make sure everything's tight. So again, feed it in, keeping it square. And as soon as it grabs, keep tension on the film by just holding your thumbs at the tips. If you get good at this, you shouldn't get any wrinkles. But depending on your board shape, sometimes you just can't help it. It's inevitable. So you see our board come out the other side. Look at that, not one wrinkle, it's beautiful. So I'll feed it through one more time just to Make sure we've got a good bond. Remember that we've got the um, shelf paper on the bottom here, so what this laminator is also doing is sort of make sure that shelf paper is bonded with some pressure and a little bit of heat, because we don't want any uh, etching getting onto that copper down there. So this is our board with the green film on top. And what you'll notice is that some of the tracks are still filled in by the green film. Um, what I've discovered it sort of works absolutely best for this is just use a vinyl eraser and then just go gently over the board and what it does is it's got just enough friction to take off any of that uh, green film that hasn't bonded to the toner because the film only sticks to the toner, it doesn't stick to the copper. So I just go over the whole board do an inspection and just continue to go over any little spots where you, a hole might exist or a track um, has been covered. So once our green has been inspected and cleaned off thoroughly, we're ready to etch. So I'm using a contact etch technique from the uh, PCB uh, fab site, whatever it's called. Um, anyhow, basically what I've created here is a little double pool here. The first one has the ferric chloride in it. It's ferric chloride. Second is just a little warm water bath surrounding it to keep it warm and it just speeds the process up a little. So basically I'll dip my board in. You have just very little in here, only enough just to fill the bottom really because it's the sponge that's holding most of it. Um, usually I flip upside down at that point. Most of the chloride's in the sponge, so I'll squeeze it out. And then just begin the rubbing process. With the warm water, it really only takes, um, you know, less than two minutes. This will be done sort of 45 seconds to two minutes, depending on uh, how potent your batch is. So just periodically check, see how your copper's doing. When you're making a double-sided board, it's more difficult to see when your copper's been uh, dissolved away. Basically, I put that on the side. Have a look, and you can see that some of the copper is already dissolving away. But uh, you'll see it, the transparent fiberglass behind once it's ready. So this board is etched now. Um, so I'll use my clean hand just to hold by the corners. I've squeezed all excess out of the sponge. Now what we can do is just mop up any extra we have off the board. And that way we're minimizing the amount that's going in the sink contaminating any environment. So we're wiping it all off. So now we have very little that we're going to rinse away, which is beneficial. Just keep our sponge in there for the next etch. So I've rinsed off the etchant. I've taken off the um, sticky backing and then rinsed under here just in case any got underneath the edges so that it doesn't continue to work on it. Um, and now what we do is we clean our toner and green foil off with just a little bit of acetone. 
So use a bit of a porous cloth so that way it can collect some of this stuff because it's a pretty thick coating that we have on here. So I've got my gloves on just to you know, keep some of the green stuff off my fingers. Just give some firm pressure and a good rub. You'll see that comes right off. Leaving your nice shiny copper trace behind. Amazing. So, if we were doing a single sided board, we'd be done. We have our single side and it would be ready to drill. We could solder on and go. But because we're doing a double sided, we have to do a registration between the top layer and the bottom layer. So, what we'll do is a pin registration where we drill. Uh, several holes in one uh, layer, which is on the copper, and then several holes in our transfer layer. That way we can line them up in the light, which I'll show you shortly. So in this particular design, I'm going to use my four mounting holes on the outside because I don't want to wreck any of the copper pads on the transfer, which tends to happen if you drill and then do a transfer. You usually have to do a little bit of a patch. So I drilled out four tiny little holes in the corner mounts with our smallest drill bit, that's the carbide uh, 0.032 inch. And you'll see on the other opposite side we have four little holes that we'll use to line up the same ones that I just drilled in the paper. When you drill paper, make sure you tape it down so it doesn't move anywhere. And just be careful uh, not to take off any of the, the toner of the drill bit by accident. Well, all that drilling uh, likely caused some dirt and the heat from the laminator caused a little bit of oxidation on the copper as well. So it's a good idea to clean our back surface again before we do the registration and do the, uh, the lamination as well with the copper image, the toner image. So I'm just going to clean this up and then uh, I'll show you how to line it up using the light. So I've got my pattern registered now. So make sure when you put your piece of paper on, you have the toner side down, of course, because it's going to go on the copper. Make sure it's orientated the right way. Look on this side and make sure your pins here align with your pins here, vice versa. So what I mean by using the light is if you look through the little hole there, you can see how the light shines through both the paper and the copper. So I did that for all four. You can't really appreciate it on film um, to make sure that they were as lined up uh, perfectly as possible and then tape them in place. Double check again after you tape because it could shift a little bit. So now we're ready to laminate. So just before I feed this through the laminator, I threw some masking tape on the bottom of my cleaned copper that uh, we etched earlier, just so I don't scratch it up. There might be dirt or something in the rollers and I don't want to get anything on my nice it work. So just like before, wait till it grabs, let it do its thing. We're going to feed it through four times, reversing it each time that it goes through. So we've got our image transferred onto the second layer of the copper. On the back I've just put the, uh, the shelf paper again to cover up our initial traces that we don't want to dissolve, all that hard work. Um, something you'll notice is right there in the middle we've got a missing piece of toner. This is caused by the drill bit just scraping on it as I was placing underneath. So what you can do is just use a Sharpie brand marker and basically make sure the tip's nice and wet and you're just dabbing it all around that area because it's dissolving the toner and also the Sharpie marker itself has some uh, properties in, in terms of resisting the edge. So we'll clean up any other little spots that happen. There's one right there. but. The traces all look great, it's just the little areas of the copper fill. And then we'll do the green film on top. Well, finally I've got the top layer uh, covered with the green foil. Uh, the first attempt, the green foil just decided to stick to everything, so I don't know if there was a contaminant on the board or something, but uh, it wasn't too bad because I could just use the acetone to clean the whole thing off, print out a new image, cut it, drill it, stick it, rescreen it with the green, and then clean off the green stuff. So now we're finally ready to etch. Here we have our finished double-sided board. So the registration is not absolutely perfect. I don't know if you can see, but the, the holes are close, but they're not exactly right on. So I might try the other method of printing um, both the top and bottom layer on a single piece of paper. But this has been working okay for me so far.